Hello, everybody. Welcome to another training session with the Google News Initiative. This time we're broadcasting from Australia. I'm John. I'm the Walkley Foundation's project manager for the Google News Initiative here down under. And it gives me great pleasure to bring to you today a webinar with Miguel de Zosa. Now, he's the Google News Lab Teaching Fellow for Australia and New Zealand. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we're all gathered today. For me, that's the Gadigal and Wongal people of the Aurora Nation and I pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. For journalists watching in our part of the world, the Walkley Foundation needs no introduction, but for a wider audience who might not have heard of us, the Walkley Foundation celebrates and promotes the most skillful, impactful and captivating stories and fosters resilience and growth in journalism in practical ways. In 2020, we will celebrate the 65th year of the Walkley Awards since they were founded by Sir William Gaston Walkley in 1956. Together working with our peers in the media industry, we also have a long history of elevating the craft of journalism through professional development. Last year, the Walkley Foundation and the Google News Initiative provided free and in-person training to thousands of journalists, editors and students in Australia and New Zealand. Like everyone else around the world, the coronavirus pandemic has meant we've had to hunker down for the past few months, but not to be deterred, we've been busy bringing you free training workshops online like this one, and we're sharing free tools and resources to support the vital work journalists do to keep their communities informed. If you have a question about anything covered in this workshop today, just type it into the chat box and we'll do our best to provide an answer. You can also contact us via email. Now, the address is newslabsupport at google.com. And you can access step-by-step -step tutorials at any time and at no cost just by going to g.co forward slash news training. And now, everyone, please welcome Miguel. Thank you very much, John. And it's great to be here. And uh, before I begin, I'd also like to... Uh, acknowledge our uh, traditional custodians I would uh, and I'd like to start today by acknowledging our traditional custodians of these lands on which we meet and recognize their continuing connection to land waters and community I pay my respects to them and their cultures and to elders past present and emerging um, I a little bit about me I'm a journalist uh, and a teacher trainer I've worked on the internet since uh, putting out news since 1994 for companies like AAP, news.com.au, Seven, and SBS. Uh, let me just, I'll just pop my uh, address on screen and my Twitter handle as well if you want to uh, reach out to me at all. Thank you very much for joining us today. Feel free to ask any questions during the live broadcast by typing them into the chat box, and one of our team will attempt to get back to you. Um, I'm hoping that by the end of today's session you'll be able to search the internet and be much more confident about what you that you'll find what you're looking for uh, today help your searches and make finding information on the web a, a lot easier and in a much more targeted fashion this will involve looking very closely at how uh, Google search panel operates a Google search operates, I'm sorry, and how syntax will call search operators can narrow your search down to the document or area you're interested in. Um, so we'll look at Google's advanced search page, and then after that, we'll quick have a quick look at what we call knowledge panels. We'll also start with some simple search operators after that, and we'll build some search strings, which are a lot like recipes for search engines. And finally, uh, we'll put these all together and set up some alerts to automate your news gathering. I'm very confident that if you play along with me, that by the end of today's session, you'll be able to write a search string to retrieve exactly what you want from a search. At this point, I want anyone who's really intimidated by anything that looks like computer coding, um, that you've always got Google's advanced search page to fall back on. That's what we're gonna start with. Plus I'll share a PDF of all of the operators I use uh, at the end of today. And just a reminder that Google has a uh, uh, an extensive uh, range of tools uh, and exercises that are available at News Lab Support. 
And please sing out and remember to use the chat window if, uh, if you want to raise any questions. If you have a second screen, great stuff, because we'll do some exercises. So uh, another little plug for uh, g.co slash news training, where you can stay up to date with all of the latest tools and workflows for finding and telling news stories on the web. The site allows you at your own pace to learn all about the elements of digital storytelling from, to, from uh, finding to verifying stories and visualizing stories on the internet. You'll find really easy to follow courses on storytelling with Google Earth, data visualization with Flourish, environmental reporting, using really cool things like Google Earth's Earth Engine. And there are also courses in multimedia storytelling and even investigative reporting. I'll refer back to the site over the course of the training, but if at some point in the future you can't remember how to use a tool, I'd highly recommend this resource. So we're going to start with some advanced search. Have you, uh, look at this window. Is this how you search? You sure a document or a page is out there, but you can't wade through the entire internet to get to it, right? So we're gonna look at how you can bypass searches like this with syntax. But first, let's understand search a little better. You might be familiar with, with these. These are called knowledge panels. They're information boxes that appear on Google when you search for entities, such as people, places, organizations, things uh, that are in the knowledge graph. These knowledge graphs draw from a database used by Google and its services to enhance its search engine's results with information gathered from a variety of sources. They're meant to give you a quick and reliable snapshot of information on a topic based on Google's understanding of available content on the web. They're automatically generated and information that appears in a knowledge panel comes from various sources across the web. A little bit of detail about these, especially the ones that feature people. It's worth knowing what they are and what they are. Some of the information displayed uh, may also come from verified entities who've suggested edits to facts on their own knowledge panels. Images that appear in the knowledge panel can come from several sources, sometimes including images that are claimed by those people. And most other images are a preview of Google image results, can be useful if you're trying to identify somebody. And in most cases, text profiles are drawn from a topic page like Wikipedia. And what are they good for? Well, they're a trustworthy, quick reference guide to a person, thing, event, or organization. And you can see here, a search for a general term will bring up topic pages like Wikipedia pages. This search also lets you see search terms associated with the one that you've used, which is really useful for seeing what others might be searching around in the topic. Have a look at that. And sometimes a general Google search is useful for just getting a general view of a topic or even seeing what people have searched for around a topic. Now, when you are looking quite specifically for something, that's when you need something like the power search engine. I'm just gonna throw the URL for what I'm looking at right now up there. So this is Google's advanced search page. It's, it can be really difficult to find. So my suggestion is if you hit that link or if you go to that link, make sure you bookmark it. I'll tell you what, they, what, those, uh, what the different fields do from the top. You can omit words, which is very handy if you're searching for words that have synonyms. You can search for an exact word or phrase. You can look for an entire string of words uh, to a 32 character limit, uh, a 32 word limit, I'm sorry. Um, you can exclude any words, and you can also, quite importantly, search for a number range. And again, if you're looking for a sequence of numbers, that can be a really handy uh, way to work, especially if you're working within a certain time frame. One thing you should always be aware about Google is that your default search is set to your local region. Now, um, I'll just take it back a little bit. So, um, there's a drop down here as well, which allows you to specify uh, where you want text to appear, or rather, what the where in the page you're searching for text. And um, as one piece of advice I can give you is, is if you think you'd be happy just using Google's advanced search, that's perfectly okay. You can bookmark that and, and happily keep going. Now, before we get into uh, more advanced search, we're going to start uh, with some basics. Have a look at your on your screen. The very basic operators that uh, you'll be using with, uh, with today are and, I'm just gonna pop that up on screen. 
you'll also use or. And you'll also use to exclude any terms not. I'll just pop that there. Now, each of these terms, um, for instance, I'll explain a little bit more about and in a second, but all will allow you to include an entire string of words uh, separated by or in a, in a search, and not or a minus will allow you to exclude them. I'll show you some examples to explain what I mean a little bit more. Now, before we do that, I just want to explain something. Every search engine uses Boolean operators in slightly different ways that may that or may require the operator to be typed in capitals or have spe special punctuation. Now, we're focusing mostly on Google search operators today. In fact, they're all on Google search operators. But be aware that different search engines have different qualities and specialities. Google, Bing, and many other commercial search engines will collect your data and to personalize your experience. This has benefits in speeding up your results in some areas, but it also has some obvious flaws for journalists hoping to keep their activity away from their targets. Now, here's a few alternatives you might want to consider. First, we have Yandex. Yandex was created before Google and is actually used by more than half of all of Russia's 110 million internet users. It's very useful for searching for profile images from social media. There's the uh, Yandex URL, if you want to have a look at that. Now, Bing is another one. This is Microsoft's uh, search engine, which uh, works on a combination of uh, human moderation and algorithmic search. Now, for those of you who are a little bit more concerned about keeping your activity quiet, uh, I can show you DuckDuckGo. Just pop that up on the screen for you. Now, with DuckDuckGo, and let's show you on screen what it looks like, um, it's a useful search engine which allows you to browse the web completely anonymously. You won't find repeats of ads for stuff you bought or thought about buying because it, didn't store, it doesn't store your search history or IP address. It has its own syntax language called bangs, which we're not going to go into detail here. But look, I'll at least share the URL with you if you're interested. Uh, let's just pop that in there. So with DuckDuckGo, you can always have a look at that and find out exactly the sort of search terms that you can use specifically to, to, uh, to uh, as operators there. But I'm going to press on. Um, there are also a lot of specialized custom search engines. Um, this one in particular, for instance, is targeting um, fashion and the uh, textile industry. And one more resource, and this one's particularly good, I'm going to share that with you, is a internet researcher by the name of Stephanie Proto. She is a search engine nerd, Harmax, and absolutely loves nothing more than sharing all sorts of detail about all sorts of specialized search engines. And her uh, Twitter feed is well worth a follow because she regularly tweets detail about search engines every day. Hopefully you're enjoying that little bit of background. We're gonna get a little bit more specific now. And now we're gonna start talking about Google search operators. It's really important to start with some baseline ideas about how Google search works. A Google search returns only pages that match all your search terms. The and is implicit in your search as far as Google is concerned. We're going to actually include the and for our more complicated search strings today. And there's a reason for that. Um, and that is because in with our syntax, we're actually using that to ensure that certain operators are in and we're not going to take the implicit and in a normal Google search for granted. Um, but again, it's really important to know that because with some of these searches, um, it might be important changing your combination of terms that you're using sometimes to get a different result. I'll show you what that means a little later on. But as I say, we're going to include the and for our more complicated search strings. Now, sometimes Google will return a search result which seems to have nothing to do with your search terms. This is because Google's found your term on a previous version of that website. Um, I'm going to show you how to retrieve that cached search later on. Also, and this is really important, 
Google has limited the number of keywords that you can search for up to a total of 32. You might think about that if you're looking for the speech of a text, say, for instance. That means that all search terms beyond the 32 word limit will not be taken into account in the search. Also, there is a character limit per keyword. So a single keyword can no, be no longer than 2,048 characters. I'd be very surprised if you had a single keyword that was that long. Anyway, uh, open up your browser. And in fact, why don't you give that first little operator that we put up there a try. Try Google search operators in your own, op in your own browser with and without inverted commas, and let's see how you go. Now, and this is always an important rule to remember, so I'm just gonna leave this one on the screen for you now. Just remember that when you're doing the search, and we'll keep this in mind from now on, inverted commas will give you an exact match. But we're gonna move on. So, and here are some more. Um, as I mentioned before, and, not, and or are very important because they will uh, include in the case of and, exclude in the case of not, and also include both in the case of or. Okay, so keep those in mind. And not, okay? You'll get plenty of opportunity to be reminded of those as we go on today. So, Right now, let's have a look at the results of this sort of search. What do you think? We've got, here's an example of the results for Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. Give it a try yourself. I'll pop that into, oops, I'll pop that into your window. And why don't you give it a try? Now, the other option is the or. Why don't you give that a try now? Do you notice the difference in results? Now let's try excluding. I'll just pop that into your window so you've got you've got an example you can use. Are you noting the different results that you're starting to get? So, just to recap, just remember and to include, or to, ex to, to include everything in a string of words and not to exclude. And as always, inverted commas will give you an exact match for a phrase that you're searching for. So let's move on. Now, here's something to try at home to test out. Again, just to recap, I'll share these with you. So there's an option for an exact match to a phrase. And there's one to include. And finally, to exclude any detail about fire at Notre Dame, you would do that. Is it starting to sink in now? Let's move on a bit. Now, I'm going to introduce an extremely important operator. And once you learn this, you actually have all of the key basic tools to start looking, uh, to start searching a little bit more deeply in the websites. And this one's really important. The site operator can be used to narrow your search down to a top level domain like .au or .gov.au or .com.au, uh, uh, or as you, as you can see here, you can use it to narrow a search down to a specific page or URL. Uh, and as I say right now, you've got site, which I'll just throw up on screen. This is how you add it, just at the top of any web address. And now we're going to look at some examples of these. So you can see up here, there's a few that uh, are, we'll use this as a bit of a chance to recap. And as I say, throughout this today's session, 
give yourself a bit of a progress check. Are you understanding what you're seeing on screen? Um, have you tried these out? Do you think that it makes sense uh, to, uh, for instance? Um, but let's let's have a look at these. And from the top, we can use the minus to remove results we don't want. We're going to use site colon to find information that might be on a site or on a top de level domain. And now I'm going to introduce a couple more. We're going to use related to find similar sites. I'll show you how that works a little later on. And now this is the first introduction of one that you're going to find really, really useful, file type, to find data sets and other documents. And finally, also cache. I referred to it earlier on. I'm going to talk about it a bit later on. <clears throat> cache searching is really useful for finding uh, detail about pages that might have uh, expired off the, off the web. But I'll show you how to do that in a little while. And as you can see, there are some examples there that you can try out at home. Uh, feel free to do that. I'm going to move on, and I'm going to share some more examples of those with you in a minute. Okay, so as you can see here, this is our example using the couple of minuses, and I'm just gonna add this on screen for you so you can try this at home. Right now, you're looking at the first screen, which is uh, using the terms Jaguar and speed. Now, what happens when we add the operator minus animal and minus cat here? What happens there? Our results completely changed, and now we're looking at Lego toys and some detail about a car. Do you see how that's worked to exclude any mention of animals and cats in our Jaguar results? <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm just going to have a cup of tea. Now, here's a really useful example, and it also includes something else. Uh, in, in, in introduces, I'm sorry, something else. Now, here we can see the site operator. And as you can see, it's trained on the ANU's website, anu.edu.au. But at the top of that, we've included a link to a phrase, China economic growth. I'm going to share this one with you in your on screen and try it out at home. Is it getting results that you expect? Is it sort of showing you information that's much closer to uh, a topic than say, for instance, if you just put that phrase itself just into normal Google. See what sort of different results you're getting. And as you can see over here, here's something about China economic growth. And here, with our site operator included, is a much more targeted result on the ANU's website. Okay, so here's another example. I'm using the topic JobKeeper and limiting my search to the .gov.au website. Do you see how that's working? And finally, oh, well, not finally, actually, because we've got a help to go through. Related is a very useful way to find sites of a similar category or genre. Now, in this example, we're training it on the delivery URL. And as you can see there, I'm getting some related food ordering services, not related to, to delivery itself, but a few others. But if I stick to just the company name, you can see there, it's mostly bringing up delivery business URLs. My suggestion is give that one a try with, say, a genre of government websites. Or for instance, if you're looking at a particular industry, it can be quite useful for research. Now, file type, speaking of useful, is possibly one of the more useful ones you can use at all. Um, because file type allows you to directly access um, files online as they appear in search results. So this is how you use it, just as a file, sorry, just as file type colon, and then add any other extension you want. For instance, I'll show you a few examples as we go on here. But here's a good one, which is basically looking for uh, file types with the extension XLS, as you know, Excel spreadsheets. And if you have a look at the results on screen I've got here, here's a search for unemployment Australia. And then look at what happens when I add file type.xls. Suddenly we get a much richer set of results which are actually looking at files which obviously have that search term in them or are related to that. Now, one more I want to show you is cache. Now, cache will find you the last version of a website stored by Google. So 
Here's the, the cached version of the World Health Organization's website. And sorry, I just jumped off that screen. It's actually showing you a version from approximately 12 hours before uh, I visited that website. And as I say, we'll return to cache searching in some depth. Okay, now we've got some brand new terms to add to uh, your knowledge. We have in title, in URL, in text, and also I'm gonna introduce the around operator, okay? But first, let's have a little recap. Remember, we have site, which allows you to concentrate your search on a particular URL. And of course, we have and, or, and not. Let's introduce some new ones. This one, in text, allows you to find pages with a certain uh, word or words in that content. This one, in title, will find for you words or a string of words in a title on a page. And this one, in URL, or in URL, will look for words in the URL on a particular page. Now, that one is quite important because, and let me just give you a little bit of explanation about that. Um, most web pages these days rely on what are known as semantic or clean URLs. They're ones that you and I can understand. They're not dots and squiggles and numbers. I'm gonna show you a little later on and how useful in URL can be at looking through those pages. Uh, and again, one more really handy one is the around operator. Now, I've included a number, a value number four in my example, but you can change that to whatever you want. We're going to move on. Hopefully, you're, this is starting to come together for you. Now, have a look at that search string on screen. And this is actually a really good progress check for you. Do you understand what it's looking for? If you do, that's fantastic. And if you don't, maybe syntax isn't your thing. That's okay, because remember, you've always got Google's advanced search page, which actually does all this stuff, does it for you. However, stick around, because I'll talk you through this URL, uh, this piece of search syntax. So from the left, the in URL is looking for uh, something that is in the web address or URL of that page. And in this case, it's looking for the word lists. The site operator is looking for anything that is in a particular web address. And in this case, it's Twitter. Now, this text has inverted commas. That should tell you that it's looking for an exact match. Okay. And in this case, uh, it's looking for a match for the term coronavirus experts. Okay. Let's actually see what sort of result we get. I'm going to pop this into my search window. And I will also, because I know that's pretty small, I'll just pop that on screen so that you can have a look at it and add that as well. Do you see that? And as I say, look at it very closely and ask yourself, is this making sense to me? Do I understand what that site is? Do I understand what the in URL is? Let's have a look at a different result. I'm just going to pop this one up on screen, and I know it's pretty small. So again, here's another example of that one. This one looking for the term Indigenous Australia. And as I say, uh, that is searching for a specific, uh, a specific word, which is lists in uh, the URL twitter.com. Okay. I will go back to uh, searching for Twitter lists. Uh, in a minute uh, because uh, there's another piece of syntax I'm going to show you. But for now, we're going to get slightly more complicated. We're going to basically now start putting all of these operators together to try and get a result. Okay? So let me give you an example. I'm going to start this one, and I'm going to flash these all up on screen so you can see exactly how I'm progressing. So I'm going to start with... This one, this is my example. I'm looking for content that's on the afp.gov.au website. I'm gonna put that up on my screen. And I know it's kind of small and I know you can't really see it. 
uh, if you have a smaller screen. However, ha at least start with that site operator. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to add a search for specific pieces of text to my URL. So I'm going to flash up a slightly different piece of search syntax starting from that. So I'm just going to add it now. Okay, do you see how that search syntax has become slightly more complicated? It's still looking at that AFP website, but now it's using the in-text operator to search for the word crime plus the phrase internal use only. Some of you will note that I haven't used inverted commas. I could, in this case, I wanna be a little bit less specific. I wanna see if those terms come up rather than necessarily look for a match. So I'm trying to keep it a little bit wide. So finally, I'm gonna look for the PDFs. So let's just see if I can add a file type operator for PDFs. And what does it then look like? It doesn't look like that. It looks like this. So what you can see here from the left is site operator, trained on www.afp.gov.au, looking for the text, crime and internal use only, and we are only looking for PDFs. So let's see how we go. I'm gonna pop that into my search window now. Hit enter. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just jump into comments just for a second. I'm gonna share that in comments so you can actually also have a look at the live result. Have a look at that. Now, I'm gonna press on a little bit. Um, I'm going to try one which is looking at a website that records all FOI requests to government. Okay, so let's have another look. And in this case, I'm going to use an example of the Home Affairs Department. So first things first, let's have a look. Right to know is the name of the website, and I have limited my search to air, uh, to just the root URL of that website. Now, what I'm going to try and do is I want to search for something in the title because I figure that the text of all FOIs, um, well, I figure that the department that's the subject of an FOI will appear in the title of the FOI itself. So this is what my search syntax now looks like. I'm using the in title command and trusting Google to uh, treat home affairs as a phrase. And let's see what sort of results I get. Now, again, it's probably a little difficult for you to see, so I'll just throw the results of that search into comments if you want to have a click of those. Okay. Now, a couple more. Uh, here's something topical. Anybody want to have a look at research that might have been done at universities in Australia on the subject of slavery in Australia? You might want to try that piece of syntax. As you're probably starting to notice, it's using slavery Australia as a topic and then uh, training it on the site operator and looking at all uh, educational institutions, not just universities. Now, this one is kind of fun. I like it anyway, because it always helps me with dinner. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually use these search operators to look for a recipe, okay? Because using search strings is kind of like look at recipes. But first things first, have a look at your screen. So we're looking for, right now, recipes on the cooking uh, part of the New York Times website featuring chicken in the title. So what happens if you add some more? Let's just say, and this, and remember what I was saying to you before about the and. We don't always use it, and then sometimes we do. And in this case, we will. So that's what I'm gonna change my syntax, my search results to. Sorry, my search operators to. 
and let's have a look at the change in recipes. So now suddenly I'm getting recipes which have the word chili in the title and in the ingredients text. I'm going to try one more. Okay, now I'm going to do this only because I know some of you can be a bit funny about these things. I'm using a minus operator in my search now. I know some of you are a bit queasy about coriander. So here's my result. So now I have a bunch of recipes which are safely, for some people, devoid of coriander. My suggestion is take that piece of syntax. It's a really good way of practicing. Are you looking for the title of a recipe or are you looking for something in the ingredients list? The title should tell you let's use in title. If something's in the ingredients list, why not use in text? Okay. Now, I'm going to show you one more uh, before I actually move on to some other ones looking at government websites. But um, I uh, wanted to look at whether uh, the New South Wales Law Enforcement Conduct Commission uh, has been looking into police strip searches. So what I'm going to do is find the Law Enforcement Conduct Commission's website, which here it is. I prepared it earlier. Now, I want to narrow it down to the most relevant page. Okay, so I want to go to their publications and news page because I don't really want to be drilling through policy and stuff like that. I want to see stuff that's coming up. Okay, so there's their publications and news page. So I'm going to start building their syntax by just taking out the bit of the URL I want. And I'm going to throw this into your chat window so you can, it's into the banner so you can see it on the bottom of the screen. So this is now what my syntax looks like. Does that match what you thought? Now, I simply now want to see if there's any mention of the term strip search in anything that they put out in their news and publications. Let's have a look. So here it is. I'm just going to add it to your screen so you can see what I'm using. And if I pop that into Google, it'll think I'm a bot. Oh, and by the way, Treat this as a badge of honor. It'll come up quite often. If you do do a lot of Google searching, sometimes Google thinks you're a bot. And also, and another one. I'll be back with you in a sec. Treat, treat this as an opportunity to have a cup of tea. Is that a car or is that a truck? Oh, I'm back. Thank you, Google. Um, so you can see here my search results, which I'll pop into the banner window so you too hopefully can get the experience of feeling like a bot. Have a look at that. So you can see there it's got lots of mentions of strip search. It's a, it's a limited search result because it's obviously narrowed straight into the stuff that I wanted. Is this starting to make sense now? Hopefully it is. I'm going to press on a little bit, and as I say, there'll be lots of opportunity for uh, a bit of recap. So let's have a look and do a bit of experimenting. Now, as you know, uh, the Australian government has signed up for Amazon Cloud Storage. Uh, and in fact, uh, Amazon's cloud storage, uh, their, their revenue grew about 34% in the last quarter, and I think 25% in the quarter before that. Governments, individual agencies, Public universities, government controlled agencies now have to use AWS, which is Amazon Web Storage, for their cloud storage. Now, just for some perspective, last uh, in 2018 19, the ATO, IPA, Australia, uh, the ABS, and the CSIRO, uh, just those agencies alone spent a billion dollars on cloud storage in Australia. They do lots of stuff, including data storage and analytics, Internet of Things management, image recognition, content delivery, and lots and lots more. So, question, is it possible to find anything on an AWS server using Google operators? And the answer is yes. And another question, is the Australian government content hosted on Amazon servers here and in the US? Yes. Now we're going to have a look at how the site operator uh, can narrow down on the address on, uh, for the address on Google's Amazon servers, I'm sorry. Uh, and um, we're going to throw in terms like confidential and stuff like that to kick things off. So. First things first, let me just throw you 
the syntax that I'm using. So have a look at this and see if you understand it because um, that's what's actually on screen right now. So I'm just going to pop that into a search window here. And already it's beginning to produce uh, examples of search results relating to all sorts of stuff. Um, I'll leave those results with you. Uh, sorry, I'll leave the uh, uh, sifting through those results with you because we're going to move on a little bit. Um, now, I'm going to get slightly more complicated. And again, I'm going to share this one with you. This one is looking, using the in URL command, it's looking for the existence of .gov.au uh, and then uh, in the, the Amazon AWS URL, and then looking for terms like commercial, confidential, or commercial in confidence, and also IPART, which is the Independent Pricing and Regulatory, Regulatory Tribunal URL. I'll just pop that into uh, search as well, which I'll share with you in, in comments if you want to have a click on that and have a play with it. Now, something I should explain to you, and I'm going to just quickly share one more. Uh, here's, here's, uh, uh, yeah, just, so here's another example I'll quickly share with you in, in, in the banner. Now, this one is looking for the mention of APH, which many of you will know is, is the, uh, in the URL for our parliamentary website. And again, on a secure Amazon server and looking for anything that might have confidential and file type PDF in it. Okay. Now, I really should explain to you that not all of the results are conventional web pages. Many of them will actually just be uh, XML files, PDFs, but often they'll have titles. Um, and in this case, you could probably treat the search for Amazon uh, on an Amazon bucket. Uh, as a bit of a prompt for an F FOI, because all items there uh, generally represent something that has existed or does exist on a government server. You just don't have the admin privileges to get to it. What that syntax allows you to do is at least know that it was there once or could be. Okay, I'm going to press on for a different sort of search. Now, uh, going, a going back to, uh, let me just we can strip back to much more simple operators to look for data as well. And I've just got an example which I'm going to throw into your screen. Now, on the Australia's data website, you can find all sorts of examples. And in this case, by drilling down to the data set page, uh, and searching for soil toxicity in the title, uh, and I should really share that result with you, you can get all sorts of interesting documents featuring the term soil toxicity. And those, again, will include the sorts of files which you can then use in visualizations or things like that. So we're going to move on a little teeny bit because time is running out. Now, just quickly, uh, I want to show you the value of multiple searches. Now, uh, there are around 50 Australian companies delivering parts to, uh, you know, this uh, joint strike fighter thing. And apparently it's about a billion to $3 billion worth of work. Could employ up to 5,000 people in Australia. So what I thought was what would happen is if you search different departments for the same piece of text. So I'm going to share all of these examples with you. This is kind of an interesting experiment. So here's one. And if you try defense, oh, and by the way, as many of you might know, um, the F-35 is sometimes spelled F-35 as well as F-35. So let me give you an example. Here's the, the Australian tenders website. If you use the syntax F-35, oh, and by the way, some of you might be wondering, well, why isn't it simply operating as a minus for 35? The reason is, is that because the minus is hard up against the F, 
it's searching for F35 as a term, not excluding the 35. Thank goodness it can do the thinking for us. And here's another one from the Australian National Audit Office looking for the same piece of text. If you do that search on different sites, and here's even yet another one for the PricewaterhouseCoopers website. And the reason why I do that is because they were involved in doing an economic impact statement for the F35. And you can even use the same syntax on the Department of Environment's website to find stuff about the F35. So what I'm trying to hopefully give you an example of there is try your, your, your uh, searches in different uh, websites, train the site URL on individual URLs rather than just on one big one, um, especially if you're particularly interested in, for instance, if it's the finances behind the F35, well, you probably look at, you know, Treasury uh, and the National Audit Office and places like that. So keep that in mind. Now, look, um, because time is running sort of out, I've got a few more things I want to show you. I want to show you how you can actually use um, search syntax for, for uh, things like online forums. Now, uh, game forums, uh, you know, uh, are essentially exist for fairly benign subjects because gamers love to chat, each, chat with each other while they play games. That's totally understandable. Having said that, uh, because of their lack of content restrictions, they can also become uh, places where people who uh, uh, maybe have darker purposes are uh, gathering. So let's show you a few examples. This is an example of a site called Discord. Now, Discord is uh, a bit of a um, forum where they, which gathers together Discord servers. Now, I'll just show you that up on screen. Now, that's a simple site operator basically uh, trained on the Discord website. Let me just modify that slightly. It's not showing that complete URL. So there you go. That's correct. Now, um, I'm going to show you a bit of syntax that will search for a term across all of their topic servers. So uh, I'll just pop that onto the screen. Have a look at that while I throw that into a site search. Now, what this is bringing back for me is lots of examples with uh, the term New Zealand as a phrase, because as you can see, I've used inverted commas uh, right across those. Um, my suggestion with, uh, particularly with something like Discord, you probably need to know uh, a few uh, specialist terms. Uh, for those of you who are perhaps maybe looking for the alt-right, uh, you'll find lots of them on the Discord servers. My suggestion is currently use terms like uh, boogaloo and you'll probably uh, bring up some interesting results. Um, okay, so I'm going to just quickly show you a piece of syntax that will also help you search Reddit. Uh, so if you, as everybody knows, uh, if you, Reddit is composed of subreddits. So what you need to do is to know what your subreddit is. And in this case, for instance, uh, I know that uh, I'm training mine on the Oslaw subreddit. And as you can see from that example over there, uh, I'm looking for the term defamation in the title. And just quickly, if any of you who are troll hunters, this is a, I'll just quickly show you a good one for sifting through, should you be that way inclined, the from website, which is now home of uh, 4chan. And again, if you use the in title or in text command, that'll drill through all of the various servers that are on that website. It can also be turned on to uh, Facebook. Now, I've got some fairly, uh, a, a pretty benign example here. This is uh, an example of a group that is, group. I'm doing a group search essentially for groups that are into uh, gardening. And I'll quickly show you an example that will look for groups that are looking at Australian native plants. Now, just moving on, uh, let's see if I 
This is a slight variation, which is looking again at Facebook, but using the in URL command. This one in. using the in URL command to look for uh, a specific title in group titles. Now, uh, I'm just going to quickly show you something that's lots of fun. Um, let me just, as I was saying, you can use this for all sorts of social media. I mean, this is an example, for instance, if you are interested in TikTok and who the hell isn't uh, here's an example of a search for videos uh, on TikTok which uh, may have the text of the the surname of the New Zealand Prime Minister or NZ or stay at home which was a trending hashtag good way to look for really cool videos and look let me just quickly share this in the comments because you probably want to look at all those great search results Okay, so uh, I want to move on to just showing you a couple of little Twitter operators too. Now, we had a look at Twitter search before. Now, there's a really simple way to search Twitter, and I've shown you one example right there. Quite literally, pop into your window. Uh, the You do a Google search simply using at Twitter, at, at Twitter, I'm sorry, and then throw in your example text straight after that. That's all it is. Really nifty way of quickly searching for text on Twitter. In my example, I'll throw that into the uh, window as well, is looking for mentions of BLM and Aotearoa. So as I say, if you want to, if you're a bit, uh, if you're wanting to try these out with your own examples, that's exactly what I encourage you to do during the course of this. Now, Let's have a look at some Twitter list searching, okay? So you this would look familiar to you from before, which is our list name search. So as you can see there from the left, that's actually looking for uh, an example um, of a particular term that's appearing in a list. I'm going to just pop that up on screen as well. So, And I'll use the example. And it'll bring up any mention of the word space in people's Twitter list. I'll pop this one in to uh, the comments window so you can just try that yourself. Now, one more. This time, it's a slight variation. And this is a good example of why something, there is no one. Uh, sort of set rule for how you might go and search for something. In this case, let me just pop that. Uh, this is now looking uh, again for the term lists as it, as it appears in the Twitter site URL. And again, it's looking for the term coronavirus experts uh, as, as, a, as a phrase match. And that actually brings you a slightly different set of results. So I guess what I'm trying to encourage there is, is Think flexibly. Once you've got all of these various tools, you might want to try different ones. Don't just stick to the same one. Now, this, uh, and we're getting close to the end, um, but I just want to show you this LinkedIn uh, finder. Now, this is an example of the sort of thing which at the beginning of this hour, you probably would never have come across and you might even never have used and probably never would understand. So. Hopefully, let's just see, hopefully I've been a bit useful and shown you a few new things, but let's show you this one. So what you're looking at here from the left is a syntax which is trained on the LinkedIn website. It's looking for uh, the terms in or pub in the URL, but it definitely doesn't want directory in the title. It definitely doesn't want uh, dir. Uh, or jobs in the URL. In other words, what it's giving you is it's giving you a clean LinkedIn search. Okay, so I'm going to build on that just a teeny bit. If, for instance, you're looking for people who work in a particular department, 
I'm just going to show you my example. I'm going to share the syntax that I've used with you. So bear in mind, my example is using the term Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. Now, if you add that, um, whoops, let me just start that one again, folks. I'm just going to rewrite that syntax that's on your screen. I just made a mistake with that. I'll get rid of that. Okay. Now, this is correct. So from the top, it's very long. Uh, and you know what? Just for the hell of it, I'll throw it into the chat window just in case. Um, so from the top, you can see it's on LinkedIn and it's got all of the other stuff, which is removing jobs and directory listings. And it ends with Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. Now try it out for yourself. I'll just pop it into my search window. And I've got a long list of people who have um, Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet in their profile. Great way to uh, hopefully supplement your contacts list. And remember the cool thing about LinkedIn is that unlike Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, we're not, people aren't necessarily selectively showing bits of themselves or keeping themselves private. They want everything on show, especially when it comes to um, their professional career. So it can be pretty useful as a way of keeping up with people. Now, we only have a couple of minutes. Uh, I just quickly want to talk to you about cache searching. Uh, it's really important for you to remember that the Wayback Machine uh, is uh, uh, a essentially an archive of the internet going all the way back to the beginning. Um, these pages here uh, that you're looking at, uh, those, those colored parts of pages are basically active cached pages. Now I'm just gonna quickly share that URL with you uh, because we are running out of time, but it is a pretty useful one. Um, and you can search the, uh, you can actually search the Wayback Machines page just like uh, you can a regular website. Um, also, I'm just going to skip along a little bit. Uh, Archive.is is an extremely useful tool, which also allows you, again, to search cached versions. In some cases, social media. Very, very useful and uh, a really nifty way to uh, keep up with things, uh, or, or at least keep track of some social media and a good way to record it if you are reporting on it. Now, just really quickly and just finally with all of this really useful search syntax uh, you can actually use a lot of this to speed up your news gathering so what i'd suggest you do is for instance uh go i'm going to use an example here which i'm just going to pop up on on uh, in uh, your banners this is going to be my um okay so here's my example uh, which is basically trained on the productivity website. Now I'm just going to open up Google Alerts. And all I need to do is simply pop my search syntax in uh, and hit create alert. I usually set mine to as they happen. Uh, but when you enter your search syntax in, you'll immediately get a result showing you that there are in fact um, uh, terms just like this, uh, which have corresponded to uh, your search. So look, unfortunately, we are absolutely almost at the end of today. Uh, I really, really hope you found this useful. Uh, it's, uh, I'm gonna hand you back to John Bergen, but not before I say do make sure to uh, visit the G.co news training website. Uh, feel free to email me if uh, there is anything that you'd like to ask or follow up. And uh, let me just flash my details up on screen again. Uh, and definitely, if you uh, need to, you can always contact us at News Lab Support or simply just go to G.co news training. And uh, look, thank you very, very much for joining me this afternoon. Uh, I'm gonna hand you back to John Bergen of At The War, please. And uh, thank you all very much for joining me. And enjoy the rest of your day and have a lovely weekend. Thanks very much, Miguel. Um, I'm sure we could all agree that we'd love to listen to Miguel for hours and hours and hours. So who knows, maybe we'll do that. Watch this space. I really hope you enjoyed today's webinar.
button and that you found it useful. And remember, if you have any questions about Google products and services or how the Google News Initiative is working with newsrooms and publishers, you can email newslabsupport at google.com. And I'll just put that up on the screen. Um, if you have any questions for the Walkley Foundation, you can reach us at walkleys um, at walkleys.com. And we'll be back with another online workshop very soon. Just search for the Google News Initiative on YouTube to find out more. Um, thanks again. That was our little wind-up alarm just there. And stay safe, everyone. Thanks again. Bye.